G'day guys, it's Rodney from I Comply here and we're here for another segment of Having a Yarn on the Farm, the first one for 2022. And uh, I thought there's no better way to kick off 2022 with one of those things that we always discuss at the start of the year and that's uh, New Year's resolutions. Now, a lot of people come into the new year and they say, new year, new me, I'm gonna get fit, I'm gonna live a healthier lifestyle, I'm going to do all the things that uh, I want to do to try and live a much more healthier life. Well, it's it's easier said than done, especially when you're a farmer. And uh, a lot of farmers will turn around and say, well, I want to do that. But, uh, you know, quite frankly, I'm just too busy. Um, I think personally, there's no such thing as being too busy for your health. And today I'm going to talk to a very special guest, uh, Dr. Pat Brunon who is an author of a book called Why Are You Sick, Fat and Tired? And uh, this, this book grabbed my attention because uh, when I read the title, I thought, well, I'm tired. I'm always tired. I am fat. Um, I am fat. But I also, I could be sick. I'm not too sure. I'm going to try and get the answers from Dr. Pat today. Dr. Pat, thanks for having you on with us uh, all the way from the USA. Yes, I love it. Thank you so much for the invite. I'm glad to be here. I've always wanted to go down under, you know, <laughs> and this is the closest I'm going to be getting right now. <laughs> so this is great. Dr. Pat, um, talk to me about, um, you know, farmers, if you ask any farmer, what's the one thing they don't have? The first thing they'll tell you is they don't have time. Um, one of the biggest issues, you know, working on a farm is you work from daylight till dawn, the sun comes up, you start working, you, you're you on the run, you're, you're rushing, you're busy all the time. Um, you're not really looking after yourself. Uh, what would you say to a farmer which says, I don't have time to get healthy? Well, if you don't pay now, you'll pay later. <laughs> um, and, and that's really true because, you know, it's just like they say the same thing about veterinary medicine. So when somebody, you know, people would ask me like, how do I, why do I spend so much money on my dog? right because dogs have the same ailments as human beings do so they go why do i spend so much time i make sure that he eats well i make sure that he gets exercise i make sure that he has a really nice cozy place to sleep i make sure that he has a good attitude when he's not has a good attitude he gets a time out and i make sure that his nervous system and his posture is functional you know as my background as being a chiropractor acupuncture physician both of them being a physician, you know, I have that expertise in doing that. So I would tell people, I go, you know, it doesn't take a lot of time, you know, to take care of yourself because taking care of yourself is self-love, you know, and if you want to be around for the people who matter and the people who you love, you've got to carve out that, like, that time, you know, to be able to do that. Or you have to have, you know, a spouse or you have to have somebody else so you get the support that you need so you can get the things done, you know, and, and looking at, because I teach the five pillars of health you know, in order to do that. What are those five pillars of health? I'd be interested to uh, to learn more about that. Well, I always start off with playing, saying what the definition of health is, because the definition of health in Webster's Marion Dictionary always says that it is a condition of 100% function of the organs. That's the summation of it. And the World Health Organization says that it's not the, merely the absence of disease or infirmities, and or it's, it's not something to aspire to, it's something that we should have and we should in, enjoy and engage in on a daily basis. So the five pillars that make that component up that I teach are nutrition diet, because you can have a diet, doesn't mean it's nutrition. You have to have the nutrition to have the support for that. You have to have proper exercise. You have to have proper sleep. You have to have a positive mental attitude and the mindset that really supports that so you can propel that. Because if you don't have those two, that combination of mindset and the proper mental attitude, then what happens is, is that it's really difficult to be successful in your diet and in your life, doesn't matter even if it's for your nutrition. And the last pillar is a proper, um, like a properly functioning nervous system, which includes the biomechanics and the posture of your body, you know, and so farmers I know, you know, the, the ones that I know when I go out into the country, because my neighbors for like a, a year were cows. And so I used to walk by, my dog used to command their attention. They would all come running down and they would just look at him and he would look back at them and around 20 minutes later, he'd walk away. <laughs> Whatever they said, you know, I have no clue. But 
And I always thought that that was really interesting. But the, the thing is, is about you've got to have structure, you've got to have function, because if you don't have good structure, you can't have good function. And when you don't have good function, you have other things. You start having ailments, you have chronic illness and disease start to like propagate, you know, so it's, it starts, it's like planting a seed and feeding it well. So if you don't take really good care of those five pillars, the nutrition, the proper nutrition, the proper exercise, the proper sleep, the proper positive mental attitude and mindset, and the proper, you know, um, posture and biomechanics, then at some point, well, that the, all those things are all pieces of the pie and they're all equal in some regard because they make up the pie, you know, but you have to have all those pieces in order to really experience that level of health. One, one of the things that amazes me about farmers is, and I, the predominantly a lot of the farmers I work with are horticultural farmers. So they grow mm -hmm. fruit and vegetables. So they're, mm -hmm. they're growing a healthy product for a healthy life. But in hindsight, they don't practice what they preach because they're out there growing all these fresh fruit and vegetables, but they're eating, you know, takeaway food because they don't have time to eat. I think they should probably take a step back and say, hey, um, we need to eat healthy, we're growing healthy, try and encompass the lifestyle of what they're growing, which is a healthy product, into their own lifestyle. Do you think that's a fair assumption? Well, it could be if they're eating fast food, <laughs> you know, they're on the highway. <laughs> What's that song, The Highway to Dot 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 by Van Halen? Um, they, you know, if you, if you don't, if, if you, whatever you feed your body, has to be nutritious enough to support it to be able to have function. And so um, when I, I have 55 acres out in Oklahoma, and on those 55 acres, I don't farm it. Right now, it has a really great little, um, you know, pond in it, a sizable pond, you know, and it has vegetation. And it, I used to rent it out to farmers for cattle, um, but I don't do that anymore. Um, but you know, you have you have to like, you know, you have to till the soil. I mean, they take so much time and effort to make sure that the seeds are planted at the right time, that the, you know, that the uh, food is harvested at the right time in order to get it from like farmland to, um, you know, table, right? Cause that's where the, the, those restaurants come in from farm to table. And so you have all the pieces of the puzzle there. And if you eat, you know, in that old fashioned way, you know, um, you know, I know that, you know, in this in the States, when I look at someone tell me that their, you know, grandfather's like 95, you don't hear those people get living up to those ages anymore. So it's like fuel. If you have a, you know, like the, the John Deere of, you know, Maserati and you're feeding it and you're not feeding it the right fuel, it's going to break and your body does the same thing. What, what does amaze me about farmers is they, they will go out and spend a half a million dollars on a piece of equipment, you know, a beautiful case tractor or John Deere tractor. And because that's an asset that costs them a lot of money, they take care of that asset. Every week, they wash the dirt off it. Every week, they check the, the oil, they change the fuel filters. They look after it. And uh, they look after it because they know it's expensive and they want to get longevity out of that piece of equipment. Um, mm -hmm. I'm struggling to understand why farmers don't realize that probably their biggest asset is the one that looks them in the mirror every day. Well, you know, their, their biggest asset is that you're like your best investment is yourself. So if they, if you expect your machine, your machinery to function, just as you just indicated, you know, you change the oil, you change the tires, you know, you get the dirt off and you take care of it. You spray the undercarriage and you do all those things that are important for its functionality. So when somebody doesn't take care of their own body, because your body is a machine also, it has all these components. Everything is put there for a reason. It's not put there to have be taken out at some other point in time. And the idea is that if you're going to have it there, you know, your first source of nutrition, you know, if whatever you're eating is either, either feeding a disease, you know, or it's, you know, it's either fixing it. You know, so it's, it's so food is medicine. You've got to have that if you have that concept and every food, every bite that you take is affecting you hormonally. So if you don't have the, the right kinds of foods and if they're not put together in the right kind of way, then what happens is, is that your body starts wearing down. I mean, like don't put oil in your in your, in your tractor, you know, and see what happens with it.
You know, if you don't put oils in, in your tractor, I go in your body, meaning your tractor, you just like see what happens to it. You know, you end up in the hospital, and then who's gonna tar then who's gonna farm? Yeah. You know, so if, if you really want to stay on your game, you know, and be up there so that you can do that, you've got to eat well. When I had my practice, you know, people used to ask me, I had a really busy practice, and um, I didn't want it to a super busy practice. It just evolved, and I just kind of went along for the ride. And somebody asked me, well, Dr. Pat, how do you do it? You're in here at 7.30 in the morning, and you don't walk out of here till what time? And I said, 6 o'clock, 6.30. And they said, so you're here for 11 hours. And um, they go, how do you do it? And I said, the thing that I do, that I pay attention to, is my nutrition. You know, and so I take, I make sure that I eat really clean. I don't eat junk food. I don't put intentionally a bag of sugar, and the only time I use it is at Thanksgiving here in the United States, because I make the best cranberry sauce ever. <laughs> you know? But it's like, and people, I always get invited back for that. Um, and so when I make cranberry sauce, it's not made, there's not a lot of ton of sugar in it. You know, cranberries are really bitter, right? You yeah, know, they're correct. very like sour. And so, um, so I take those and I put, you know, and I, I portion it out. I figured out a recipe and everyone's going, oh my God, it's not sweet. Cause then it cuts your digestion. When you eat sugar type stuff, it cuts your digestion in a nanosecond. And so then your food just sits there and putrefies and you have bloating, you have gas, you have pain, you injure the one layer cells that are in the intestinal tract. And when that happens, food seeps out into your bloodstream and then your body starts ultimately has to get that over to the liver and the liver takes it from there and it's, try, it's trying to get it back out into the intestinal tract so it can end up in the toilet, whether it's either in, either in urine or in as a bowel movement. Yep. You know, and so, and if it keeps on recycling, it starts storing it in blood, brain, bone and fat. So who wants that? I mean, it's so much easier to eat really well. Right now, I'm on a 10-day detox, and I've got, a, you can tell I have a lot of energy. And um, when I was 45, I had a lot more energy. But, you know, I have a partner who's 45, and she reminds me of that every day I talk to her. <laughs> but the, the thing is, is that in order to maintain a certain level of energy, in order to maintain being stronger, being able to make good decisions, being able to have balance in your life, being able to get more done in a day you got to pay attention to your health and the only way you're going to really get that is by doing wellness initiatives true true tell me dr pat your your book the title is quite confronting why are you sick fat and tired um i'd love to know why so i'm going to read your book but uh thank you how how, how did you uh how did you come up with that title um my my brother-in-law and my sister are um, very, very big in um, the health and wellness sector here in um, in Australia. They've, oh, awesome. they're, they're married entrepreneurs. They they went on the first Australian race here in Australia. They competed in that. And uh, they brought out a book um, about childhood obesity and it was called, Please Mum, Don't Supersize Me. And yep. it was really confronting with the title. And it, people said, oh, you know, parents were, were taken aback a little bit with, um, with that title. Your title is quite confronting. Um, why are you sick, fat and tired? How did you come up with that name? And uh, give me the reasons why. Well, actually the name came from my sister as I was uh, running around titles in it. But you have to understand what the book's about. The book is an advocating tool. It is a workbook and it is a guidebook. You know, I've never been to Australia at all. So if I went down there, I would buy a book that would tell me all about Australia. And then I would hire a guy. I would want to find out the best information possible. Think of me as a tour guide, you know? And so when I do that, the book is a book of questions. It goes through the organ systems of the body. So the organ systems of the body have got to work like a Swiss watch. So when it works as a switch watch, everything's hunky-dory. When one of the components starts to break, the whole watch starts to break down. But you don't necessarily always notice that at first. I call that Grim Reaper syndrome. So people have bloating, they have poop problems, they have you know bad breath, they have skin problems, they can't sleep, you know, they're irritable, they're tired, you know, and they just can't get past anything. So that book sizes that up so it looks at your what what is it I don't I don't guess, so I test. So it looks at what is it that is your weakest link in all those organ systems, and it shows you where to spend your time, your energy, and your money. So from this book, I mentor and I coach people to have a much better life so they live longer, better, healthier, and happier. 
whether no matter what they're doing it doesn't matter what matters is, is it's like you know when you realize where you have a glitch you got to fix the glitch it's like you got you know you have a light out on your tractor you fix the light you don't let it go and so these things are all really important so I was at a business meeting and somebody from Australia, by the way, in that business meeting on Zoom said, I don't need your book, you know, and I'm not sick, I'm not fat, I'm not tired. And I said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. And my response to her gave me a lot of room to talk about this book because people know if they're fat. You can take a look in the mirror and you know whether or not your clothes when you were 29 years old are still fitting you. You know, and it's just like, and like, what, well, what happens? How did that happen? You know, and so you got to take a look at like, well, there's that component right there. And you also don't know, unless you do a body composition, if you're really fat or not, because you can have this, you could be skinny as a rail and you could have visceral fat around your organs, which is pretty deadly ultimately. So then you have the, you know, like tired part, you know, if you're tired, you know, and it's not just being tired, like I had a long day at work, I've been, on, you know, I've been out, you know, like, you know, pruning vegetables or whatever it was. I've done, I did a 10 mile bike ride or a 35 mile bike ride. It isn't that kind of tired. The tired I'm talking about is something that is persistent, you know, and so it's just like, so, and you know, if you're tired and if you're tired, sometimes people keep on pushing through it, you know, and you're burning the candles at both ends. eventually the candle's going to meet in the middle and self combust right Correct. so we don't want that to happen but people don't know if they're sick you know having cancer having heart disease having hypertension having immune system disorders and autoimmune disorders don't happen overnight they happen over a long period of time in a long haul so those things keep on eroding your immune system which we so incredibly need and we found out that we needed it more than ever since you know um, you know at March 2020 you know, not saying any other names along with that or going down that rabbit hole. But we know that, you know, if you don't have a good immune system, you're subject to a lot of things. You're subject to all those chronic illnesses and diseases, which are called comorbidities. And those comorbidities set you up to have more exposure to whatever's going around. You know, so if you don't have a good immune system, if you're not out and interacting with your environment, you know, then it keeps on suppressing your immune system. And if your immune system gets suppressed enough and something goes by, you're thinking like, why did I get sick so easy? Why am I suddenly getting sick? Why am I suddenly having a cold all the time? Why am I congested? Why can't I sleep? You know, and all those things. And sleep is like the cream of the crop also because when you sleep and in that deep phase, there's four phases. There's light, light, that's one and two. There's deep, deep, three and four. And five is our REM. And so, but when you're in that deep sleep, it's where you restore, you repair, you revitalize, and you also have the opportunity for your brain to detox and it resets your hormones in your body. Everything happens during that. So sleep is so essential, but people don't get enough of it because they're on their computer sleep, they're listening to something, they're watching something, or they went to bed angry, you know, and, and or upset, or they went to bed, you know, it's just like, or they're they have just too much exposure and too much going on. So they don't have any tools of how to shut down. So in all those five pillars, that was the third pillar, but in all those five pillars, I teach people and help people make better decisions so they can make better decisions with their healthcare and how they move forward with that. So that's I, how the title came about and that's what a chunk of the book. I think you touched on a really good point there about having the ability to shut down. And, you know, I know talking to a lot of farmers at the moment and over here in Australia, um, the last 12 to 18 months with our borders being closed and lack of workforce. And obviously we relied on a lot of backpackers coming to Australia to pick our crops. They didn't mm -hmm. come when the borders were shut. Uh, having that ability to shut off, when a farmer goes to bed after doing a 12 hour day and he's lying in bed, that's when his thoughts start racing because oh. he's been too busy all day to be worrying about those things. So he goes to bed, he puts his head on the pillow and he starts thinking about, you know, how am I gonna pick my crop when I don't have a workforce? You know, how am I gonna sell my crop when all the restaurants are closed due to COVID? And he doesn't have that ability to switch off. I think a healthy body and a healthy mind go so, go hand in hand. And if, if one doesn't work, the other one's not gonna work at all. Well, there's three reasons why people get sick. And so, in a nutshell, one is trauma. 
and it starts at birth. When you come out the birth canal, nine out of 10 children who are born have some type of cervical damage from the birthing process. So that's why you go to a chiropractor, that's why you seek out the biomechanics, and that's why you keep on doing it your life. That's the fifth pillar of health. Then you have toxins from the air that you breathe, the water you drink, the chemicals that you use, the things that you use for gardening, the things that you use for cleaning your house. All those things have chemicals in it, and those chemicals take away your good life. You have, they're actually, like especially kind of things like Roundup and that kind of stuff. And so, you know, you have to be able to have a good way to, to handle those. So those are toxins. So if you don't get a handle on your thoughts, your thoughts can undo up to seven times the getting rid of the inflammation because they all have in common is inflammation. They set you up for more inflammation and the more inflammation you have, the sicker you are. So if you have, you know, it that seven times, you know, will undo things that you do, like if you went to, if you have a good chiropractor, you know, it's just like, or if you have like, you know, the foods that you eat, water you drink, that, that aspect too. So getting a handle on your thoughts is really important. That's where that fourth pillar of health comes in, the positive mental attitude and the positive, you know, mindset. And so the positive mindset and the positive mental attitude are the glue that make everything else work. So what I tell people to do when they go to sleep and they are ruminating, you know, is to do something very interesting. And the thing is like to ask yourself, like, what is it that's really bothering me right now? You know, because yeah. if you take the farmer's ex example that you just gave, they're thinking about how to get the crops, like, you know, and, and how to do their business and how to do their lives so that they can sustain their life, right? And sustain their livelihood. And so, you know, it's just like that problem's not going to go away from that moment of going to sleep and going in the morning. But if you want to think better, you know, then you want to get your sleep. So I always say that, you know, if you're in that pr that part, and no, you cannot call me <laughs> at that time in the morning. I we probably you. could in Australia because yeah, the time yeah, difference would be easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, right? I mean, right now you said it's 5.30 or something like that. Um, but the thing is, is that, you know, I always think like, what is it that's really bothering me? You know, and then I decide like, oh, is there something I can do about that right now is my question. And then if there's something I can do about right now, like, oh, I think I left the stove on, or, you know, I left something in my car, you know, I have to ask myself, well, can I go get it now? Do I need it now? Will it make me feel better mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and socially? Will it make me feel better to have whatever it is in my house, as an example, you know, as opposed to getting up at 5.30 in the morning and go out and get it? I'd rather do it when I'm up. You know, so you just go do the thing that it is that you say that you can do. If I, I can resolve that issue, do it then. If you can't, then write it down, you know, easily. Write it down, <coughs> excuse me, and, um, and then, <coughs> excuse me, I've been talking <laughs> all long so far, and I don't have a bottle of water next to me right now. Um, so write it down, move forward, you know, and, and give yourself permission. Someone told me, I have so many clients that told me, Dr. Pat, that is the biggest thing. That was like, I, you know, like when I lay there and I can't go to sleep, then I'm thinking like, oh, blah, 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 I had a fight with my husband. Well, don't go to bed mad. Make up before you go to sleep. It's much more easier to get on with life being with people who are amendable, you know? And just admit that you're wrong and also learn to ask for help. So many people have such a hard time asking for help. It doesn't make you weak. You know, they think people think that crying is, you know, a weakness. It's not a weakness. It's showing your vulnerability and showing that you, you know, are experiencing stuff. And I'm sure that all these things that, you know, these that farmers are going through, you know, it's like it isn't more isn't like it's more important or less important than somebody else. It's what's going on for them. So if it's their reality, it's important. You know, I, so it's like, I, but but how do you get a handle on that thought process? Is you got to like ask yourself that question: Is there anything I can do about it right now? If so, get up and do it. If there's, and if that's not the case, you know, then you know, give yourself permission to go to sleep. Write it down. Give yourself permission to go to sleep because it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to be there when you get up in the morning. You know, I think and, one and, of the, well, you, you, you touched on a very big thing there, and that is asking for help. And a lot of farmers in Australia going through these tough times, they live in remote communities. Mm -hmm. They live in a remote area where they can walk into the local bar and everyone knows everyone. And uh, because of that fact that everyone knows everyone, they're, they're very guarded in keeping their problems all bottled up inside. They don't want to be, you know, talking to anyone about their problems because 
it might be perceived as being weak. In Australia, we have that, that mentality that if someone's got, you know, mental health problems or emotional problems, there's a stigma where, oh, he's a bit weak, that bloke, he's got a few problems. Um, someone like yourself, you do private coaching and mentoring. It, it would be a hell of a lot easier for, a, for an Aussie farmer to talk to someone over in Arizona where nobody knows them and they're probably more inclined to, to open up a little bit because they're not going to have that stigma attached with being in that small community. Um, tell us a little bit about your, um, your training and uh, what services you offer, Dr. Pat, because you know I think there could be a lot of value in a lot of farmers in a remote area. Just having a chat to someone like yourself over Zoom where nobody in the town is going to gossip about them because they're going to know about their problems. And I promise I won't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, the the thing is, is that something that we have to, like, you know, I just wanted to do a quote from um, Henry Ford. And I just wrote it down um, this morning because I'm going to be posting this in um, LinkedIn. It says, coming together is the beginning and keeping together is progress and working together is success. So in great order quote. to, in order, it's a great quote because we come, we have strength in numbers and the government so far in this whole scenario since March, 2020 has dispersed us. So we don't feel like we have any power, but when we come together, we have progress and we can work together and we can move on for success. So what I do is that, you know, I have a background as a chiropractic sports physician. I also have a background as, you know, a functional medicine and lifestyle medicine practitioner and also as a coach. I mentor and I coach is my primary thing. And I help people pick the right way to go. It's just like, here's here's your big map of your health. Here's your health snapshot. What I do is I take their health snapshot and I make a story about it and I make a journey for them so that they can get, you know, when they get up in the morning, they got really precise things that they can do to make their day go better. Let's think about it. And I work really, I spend a lot of time on mindset and that positive mental attitude. I know I've mentioned it five or six times, but the thing is if you go to sleep negative and you wake up negative, you're only gonna attract more negativity. You know, and so, and like when you start changing that, other things can change in your life. You'll have much more of, you know, a blessing, so to speak, you know, coming your way. So that's one of the things too. And also, you know, when you, I look at like, you know, what I do with people, I never tell anybody to do something I don't do myself. And so if somebody asks me, what do you think about this? And if I say no, guarantee you, I'm not gonna tell you to do it either. <laughs> so that's, it's just my, you know, just my way, I'm very, very, I've come from the Midwest in the United States, from the Plains, you know, the area of the United States, the Plains. And, you know, and I, I don't practice, I practice what I preach. So I walk with you, that's why I mentor, and that's why I coach, which is an odd combination, because people are either one or the other. You know, but I like to combine them so that you get the best results in the shortest period of time. Does that make sense? You know, of convoluted, challenging things, and I find a better, simpler, faster way to get there so that you can get unstuck and you can move forward and you can get the results that you need. You know, there's like real simple exercises that you can do for your shoulders, for your neck, for like, and how you, you know, posture yourself. Cause I know a lot of where, out in Oklahoma, where this, my property's at, there's a lot of farmers out there that are always complaining of pain, you know, and pain is inflammation. Where's that inflammation at? Let's put it, let's quell that a little bit and see what we can do. Like what exercise can I do? Can I do something? Can you do something for five minutes in, in the morning before you go someplace? Yeah, it's not that hard. You know, can you do something for 10 minutes? Sure, I'm not asking for 20. I just, as you're working all day long, you're already doing something, but you wanna get the portions of your body that are like, you know, that need to have attention, you want that attention paid there. And you want that attention paid into your health so that you don't end up having a crisis. But so many people do not wait, you know, and they like, they keep on waiting or they waiting. That's what I meant to say. They keep on waiting, waiting, waiting until they have a crisis. And then it's a mess. You know, they're a burden to themselves. They're a burden to their family. And sometimes they can't work. So who's doing the job for you? Which, you know, it's, which it's alludes so to what you like to call in your book, the Grim Reaper syndrome. <laughs> now, <laughs> talk about confronting, you know, whenever I hear the Grim Reaper syndrome, I I can see the the Grim Reaper in the background. <laughs> Just like that. Tell, With that tell simple, me about right? the, the Grim, 
uh, Reaper syndrome because uh, that that sounds uh, that sounds confronting in its own right. It's pretty ominous, right? So what what it is is like people. We all have symptoms, and we choose whether or not we're going to pay attention to them. We hope they go away. We ask our friends, and then our friends tell us like, "Oh, I've had that before." You know, it goes away, and then the next thing you know, three months down the road, six months down the road, two years down the road, it's still there. And if you do nothing, it usually gets worse. So Grim Reaper syndrome are things like, you know, like floaters in the eye, for instance. You know, a lot of people have floaters. They didn't have them unless they had eye problems earlier or unless they had dietary problems earlier, you know, and that, you know, you have those kind of floaters in your eye. Some of them are dark and some of them are clear. And in Chinese medicine, they mean something. They mean like you've got, oh, pay attention to that, you know, because um, the patient, the client will tell you, I have floaters, they're clear. I'm going, well, I go, tell me, I go, do you wake up between one and three o'clock in the morning? You know, and they're like, how do you know that? <laughs> you know, and I always tell them that, you know, I'm intuitive. <laughs> and, you know, but the Grim Reaper syndrome are things that, you know, signs and that you should pay attention to that you don't, because if you don't, they only accumulate. And so you will know surely when you get by the book and you and you go through the book and you say and you're answering the questions in present time how many of those grim reaper syndromes that you really have you know and but the idea is that many things that we have that go on in our life they're lifestyle induced and if they're lifestyle induced you can change your choices in your lifestyle and you can have better outcomes you can be stronger you can be better you can be more vibrant you can be healthier and you can have those habits and you'll know with this book exactly where to position your resolutions for the beginning of the year. So you're not going to be doing resolutions. You're going to be picking, that's my pathway. That's what I need to do. I need to fix that. I need to, that's a glitch. It's not a really high priority right now, but I, what can I do to fix that? What can I do? What can I do so I can be better? So I don't have the big problems. And lifestyle medicine doesn't mean something's going to happen, you know, in the lifestyle medicine component of that. What it means is that you're looking at diet, exercise, targeted supplementation. You know, drugs are not meant to take forever. I mean, you can take a drug for high blood pressure, for instance. It doesn't mean you don't have high blood pressure. It just means the number that they're reading is induced in, and is, is that number because of medicine. Because if you didn't have it, you'd be sick. Correct. So it's a false experience of like, you know, of like a reality because, you know, you're saying like, well, well I, you know, I have this, but I, I take my pills and I feel healthy, you know, all the time. And, and the thing is like, are you healthy? Now, are you healthy if you get the flu and you like you express it as that is your are you healthy? Sure, because that's what your body's supposed to do when it's exposed to a foreign object or, a, or you know, a or microorganism, whether it's mold or anything else like that. You know, so you have to, you, it's just like, I, like, is somebody sick or they're not sick? Because people think health is not being sick at all. So having a cold, they think it's up for some people is a bad sign. I think it's a good sign because it's getting rid of all the crap inside your body of what's been accumulating over a period of time. And that's why those things happen seasonally. You know, that's why they happen. Yeah, in correct. In that kind of I, I think what's great in what you do with your, with your coaching and mentoring is you look at, every case on its merits and then tailor something for that where you can go if you're if you're overweight okay and someone like myself that's overweight i get online and say okay i'm overweight what am i going to do i'm going to go on a diet okay am i going to go to jenny craig or am i going to go to you know whatever you know weight watchers or whatever diet program we've got in australia you're a little bit different because if i come to you and i say look i'm overweight you're going to say okay why are you overweight? Let's have a look at your daily routine. Let's have a look at, you know, what are you doing? And, and having that that background in chiropractic um, as well, you know, if I look at it from a farmer, a farmer might come to you and you might say, well, I'm overweight. Well, why are you overweight? Well, I can't train. Why can't you train? Well, I got a bad back. Well, okay, mm -hmm. let's identify that reason first. Let's fix that reason so you can train. Um, what you do is, you know, you're looking at every case on its merit and understanding your particular client's circumstances rather than just a generalization about health. You think that's a fair comment? Relatively. <laughs> um, I think that, you know, when you tell me, let's, if, you, if we can say, let's work with you, for instance, right? Mm. Um, so you come to me, you say you want to lose weight. 
and I like say, okay, so what do you think your ideal weight is? You know, and um, so um, I ask you, are you willing to do what it takes to be healthy? Because being healthy includes being the right way. So if you say yes, it's like, oh, well, that means we're going to be making some dietary changes. I'm going to tell you not to eat sugar, you know, probably ever again. You know, and it's not that you can't use it. You just can't use it in a, in a way that, you know, you're getting it from fruit. I'm going to tell you to eat more vegetables than fruit. So all your fruit farmers are going to hate me right now. Um, I'm sorry. Um, but, you know, but I find because fruit is fructose. It has to go. It, it's, it's hard for the liver to process that you know, correctly. So if you want to lose weight, you want to give the body nutrients that it needs so it can buff up and can do the things that it needs to do. Like how much water, hydration is important for every one of those five pillars of health. It's, it's essential for every one of those five pillars of health. How did, like, wow, how much water do I drink? Um, you know, like you drink 50% of your body weight. So you weigh 200 pounds, you're going to have to drink 100 ounces of water. And so, and it's not like you all of a sudden tomorrow you go out and you drink a hundred ounces of water you build up to it you know so if you're on a farm and you're out in the field you might have to relieve yourself you know more frequently yes. you know because of that but when your body starts to hydrate it itself it also has the ability to function better because you can't it's like putting oil on your joints you got to have the water there in order for you to exercise a lot of problems a lot of pain problems are caused by dehydration yeah. So, and also people should pay attention to what kind of foods they're eating because when you eat those foods, you could have inflammation. So looking specifically at what kind of foods and what kind of foods that you like, you know, then we would say like, okay, so you got these foods. So do you think for like 21 days, you could like not eat this food? Like if I said to you, I don't want you to eat peas, because people have reactions to foods and they don't know that they have reactions to foods. They don't know what they are. But if you knew that eating rhubarb was gonna kill you, would you eat it? Mm. You know, if you were eating carrots and carrots is something that, you know, or like, you know, for me, for instance, I don't have, I have sensitivity to black cumin and I have a sensitivity to the herb turmeric. I can't eat it. It's like it's like anaphylactic shock for me. I'm never gonna put that in my mouth if I know it. I'm not gonna go out and buy a bottle of turmeric. So, you know, it's just like, can I say no to that? Sure I can. Can you say no to that? If I told you that I don't ever, like, you know, don't drink soda, you know, don't drink any diet, any diet, anything, you know, because it's an altered food. When they make diet stuff, they have to have more carbohydrates to it. And most people are carbohydrate intolerant anyway, at least a third to two thirds of the population, depending upon what country you're in. So. If you knew that and if you knew how to eat better foods so it wasn't brain surgery in order to do it, would you do it? I think from from my perspective Answer and I, question. <laughs> when I when I when I look through your book, um, you know, we talk about is there, you know, a magic source for making lifestyle changes. I know I gotta make lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. And you know, for me, the biggest issue I have when we talk about we we'll use me as a guinea pig, as a uh, yes. as a lab rat. Um, <laughs> For me, I get up in the morning and I can't eat breakfast. I can't eat anything first thing in the morning. Um, mm -hmm. I have absolutely no appetite um, to eat anything first thing in the morning. So what do I do? I get up, I have my shower and I, I get to work. You know, I drink a short black coffee that gets me going, which on an empty stomach is probably not the best thing. Um, but I'm then flat out all day at work because I'm doing back-to-back -back meetings and I'm out seeing growers and what have you, and I eat nothing. Mm -hmm. Then I get home and I'm hungry and I'm an Italian. So I eat <laughs> a lot of carbohydrates and pastas and all the things you shouldn't eat at night. Um, I eat and then, you know, because I haven't eaten all day, I'm starving. So I have this big portion of food and then I'm, you know, I'm tired. You crash. I'm, you crash. I crash on the lounge. I've got all these carbohydrates sitting on my, in my belly and I'm not, exercising or expediting them and they've got to go somewhere. So you know where they go? They go to my waistline. Now, I I know I've got these problems, okay? I, I know I have these issues, but to implement the lifestyle changes, um, I think that's the hardest thing because the first thing, and I've, I've been to see a specialist um, and he said to me, you know, Rodney, the first thing you've got to do is have breakfast. You've got to, you know, start your engine in the morning, get your metabolism going. I just can't. I can't. So, I can't eat breakfast, and I don't know why. Is it a mental thing? Is it a physical thing? I have no idea. 
Well, right now it doesn't matter, but you can make a shake and you can bring it in your car. So yeah. if, you can, if, you, if you have the right shake, because not all of them are made equal. So, you know, if you have the right medical food that you could take in the car with you, shake and take, you know, a, not all your supplements, but a, the supplements that you need to have immediately, you can do it while you're driving. You know, and so, and you can, and it's just like, and you know, I, I sometimes will take my coffee and I'll use it as part of my shake. So, you know, and like if I'm going on a long trip and I want to get that, you know, I need to want, I want to have some breakfast. At least you have nutrients in your system first thing in the morning. Could you do that? Yes or no? Yeah, I could. Okay. So, and, you know, so it's like you just need to work with somebody who thinks outside the box. To me, I've never been in the box. I've always been outside of it anyway, so I don't even know what it looks like to be inside of a box. But, you know, the, but the thing is, it's just like you need somebody like me who can sit there and say, hey, you know, so you just gave me a problem, right? I love problem solution type things. You just gave me a problem and I l listened to you and I gave you a solution that you said that you could do. We, I like, based upon that, I could tell you that we could work together. And then- I, I think it's know, great you find solutions to excuses because I just gave you an excuse on why I don't, you know, I can't have breakfast. I gave you the excuse that, you yeah. know, I just can't eat in the morning. You've given me the solution. And I think, you know, I love that type of relationship because you can go to a dietitian or you can go to, you know, like I said, the these Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig, they don't get farming. You know, they don't understand awesome. farmers. Um, you try and tell a farmer that's going to be out working all day that he can have, you know, a 50 gram piece of toast in the morning and that's all he's allowed to eat. Um, you know, you've got to find that balance with work and lifestyle and diet and it sounds to me dr pat like what you do is connect the dots well i do i'm a, I'm a really great dot connector you know when i teach i teach this nine dot theory about like all your most of your answers are not what you know they're outside outside the nine dots which is usually someone's box but you know what's interesting that you said is like you know what um you know, I love to do, and it's maybe my big why when I get up in the morning, is that when you tell me that, I just go like, okay, I go, Rodney, you need to be bigger than your excuses, <laughs> you know? And so if you can do that, then you can make a plan and you can like, you know, go on. So if somebody is like, I, I know in the summertime, you know, because the summertime down there now, those farmers have got an ice bucket with them on their tractors and they've got food in there. Why can't you take a shake out with you? You know, they give you some nutrition because if you when you don't eat your blood sugar levels go all over the place and when that happens you just get dizzy you know and you know it's just like you don't want to fall off your tractor <laughs> you know and so that wouldn't be a good thing for whatever you're hauling behind you you know and definitely would not be a good end result for you and so it's like if you if you just got to keep up your glucose levels and you have to keep up like what you're eating like what can I take with me that's simple easy i can throw it in the cooler and i can you know, like eat it on my way going out you know and it's just like what is it like you know that's like oh i could bring you could bring hard-boiled eggs out with you you know you don't need you know much for that just throw it on the ice and, and everything and then you can eat them as you go along you know and you could take you know maybe if you're like you know if you have the vegetable part of it grab one of those tomatoes you know and you know and then decide you know like how how do i fit that in so you can do things you know that if, if someone gives me a problem you know, like like that it's very um my my brain's going like oh thank you so much i love solving problems you know let me help you live better let me help you get beyond like that excuse that prevents you from having the best life ever because you deserve it you deserve somebody who actually cares and works with you and to get you past that point you know, I, and I also think, hold you accountable. That's that's a lot of things people don't want to say like, oh, you know, Rodney, I don't want to hurt your feelings. I, you know, I got over that when I was 40 years old. And <laughs> as I had my practice for 10 years and I started at the very end, someone would tell me something. I said, you either do this, you know, or else I said, I'm gonna have to send you out of here because I consciously can't treat you as a chiropractor. This is doing back stuff. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and I said, and not have you like, if you're not gonna comply, can't, I, I can't be bothered, you know, and, and I'm, when you want to really be, to be serious about going forward, we can do good, we can have fun, and I can show you how to thrive. I think, um, I mean, 
Dr. Pat, I'm going to sign. I'm going to sign up. I'm going to do your coaching. I'll tell you straight. <laughs> I'm going to do your coaching. Love that. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm going to be your first Australian customer. And the reason why is, you know, I think you, I think you get how to think outside the box. And you know, from any farmer, you know, a farmer can't go, you know, to a ten o'clock appointment um, to go to a, a dietitian to talk about his, you know, his issues. He can't go to a you know, 11 o'clock Weight Watchers meeting every week to, to sit in a room. I mean, a farmer farms. I'll tell you what a farmer can do though. At five o'clock in the morning, like I have, he can talk to you where it's 2.30 in the afternoon and get a jump start on his day. So that, Absolutely. That, that's Absolutely. fantastic. Tell us how your coaching works. How do we get, how do we, uh, how do we sign up? How do we get involved? Where do we go? What's, what's your website? Tell me now. <laughs> You know, the fact you've given me a solution, you've pricked my ears and uh, I want to know more. So how, how, do, how what's the first step in getting Dr. Pat to get our, uh, our health back on track? Well, first thing would be you could order the book, you know, because the book's going to give me a lot of information. And I have um, sheets that, you know, like intake sheets because I need to know your history. And so, um, and the 2.30 time works perfectly great, you know, on my time and your time also. Um, and then, you know, my website is under construction right now. So the, the old website's up. So it's not as thorough as the one that's going to be, you know, coming up. So, so first so, and foremost, where do we, where do we get the book? How do we order the book? Amazon. Amazon. So we can go on Amazon. Okay. Amazon's, Amazon's the bestseller. Right? So we go to yeah. Amazon. We just yeah. type in why you're sick, fat and tired and you'll get Dr. Pat's book and uh, order a copy. And, that's, yeah, that's first and, and, and foremost. Dr. Pat Ballone, right there. Um, and then, you know, the book will take you approximately two to three hours to do. So it's just like, and but the, there are a series of questions in there that are the most important. After you do that, what to do is like, I need to see what those answers are, right? So what you can do is you can send those answers to me. You can, um, you know, send them by computer. Yeah. I just need to be able to have access to them, um, like scan and copy them. So I have intake information. So you come to me, you get it, like we have a preliminary talk because I wanna find out if I can help you, if I'm the right person for you. Because if I'm not, I'm gonna tell you where to go. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you what your next step or what you have to do first you know, or second. So that is like getting on that call with me and I will send you, cause I'm gonna share, you're gonna have, you know, show links for today, right? You know, for people, I can give my um, time for my, um, on my calendar so that somebody can grab the time for this. Yep. You know, um, or uh, and then after you do that, we talk. You know, you do the you do the questionnaires and things like that that I need you to fill all those things out, and then you schedule a longer time with me. Um, and it can be on a Saturday if it works better for you, because I know that farming never stops, right? Seven to seven, you know, like seven mm -hmm. days a week, you know, 365 days a year with that whole thing. Um, so, you know, we can find we'll find a time that will work for your people and for the for all you guys down under, and. You know, and then we'll get the answers and then I'll draw you a picture. I'll say, this is where you're at. Tell me where you want to go. And we'll say, this is your easiest, fastest, simplest, quickest way to get there. And now you know where to start your health journey. So this, you're not spending, wasting time, energy or money, you know, and you can get healthier and be stronger and be warm, vibrant, and you can go do the life that you were meant to have. Sounds, i tell you what, it does, it, it, it sounds great. And I think the fact that, um, you know, you've got that chiropractic, and health background. It, it's a unique mix because, you know, you might have a farmer which says, I've got, I sit in a tractor all day. The reason why I'm overweight is I sit in a tractor all day, okay? And I, I'm spraying 10 hours a day but because he's sitting in the tractor every day. He mightn't have the right posture. He mightn't have, you know, mm -hmm. the right. Um, yeah. These are things you're not gonna pick up just going to a standardized dietitian. You know, you're you're a lot more than that. You're you're actually a lifestyle coach. What how would what would be the best way to to describe what you are, Dr. Pat? Because you know, you you wear a lot of hats and you've got a lot of experience. So you bring all that I, to the table, no? Somebody I explained was explaining something that I do because I pay, I help people, especially with that mindset thing. He goes, You're much more than a doctor. <laughs> and you're much more than a coach and you're much more than a mentor and you're much more than an acupuncturist. I'm an acupuncture physician also. So I take that as a part of my toolbox. And, you know, so, you know, the thing is, is like what to know about me is that 
I don't, I can't grow anything. I'll be honest. I, that's like one of those things. I just, if you give me something green to grow, it will never grow. Um, windows and cutting grass is not in my forte. But <laughs> fixing somebody's health and helping them identify the place where they need to start and giving them other options that they've never been given before, that makes it simple. You know, it's simpler. It doesn't always necessarily going to be easy, but when you get that breakthrough that you need, because any habit takes approximately 18 to 265 days a year to be able to break it and to make it into a ritual. So a lot of them are done in 18 days. The average is 66 days, you know, so it takes time. It took you time to get into that position. So we want to get you out of that position. So you got to like understand what the big picture is first before you start telling somebody what to do and you also have to for me I have to be willing to do the same thing I'm telling somebody to do or else I, I can't tell them to do that um, and so that is a very clear you know I, I'm very black and white I'm sometimes a little bit too direct but the you know but the point is is that the you know give having the opportunity because everyone's different you mentioned this earlier and it was something it's one of my superpowers is I don't treat everybody the same way you know, it's just like if you guys all go have coffee in the morning, you know, and you're going and you all see me because I've had this experience when my office was on Cape Cod, Massachusetts. It's like I would see people there, you know, and they all saw me. And they go, does she tell you to do? And he goes like, yeah, but did she tell you? Nope, she never told me to do that. How come you don't tell me to do that? Do I look like I'm working? <laughs> it's just like <laughs> I'm having coffee in the morning, too. And so you, it's like having... You know, it's, it's like knowing how to put those pieces of the puzzle together. Because if you go to somebody who's into doing their tests, like medical doctors, it's all about them. It's never about you. You know, and you only have 15 minutes to describe your situation. You know, and it's just like, and after that, if you don't ask the right questions, you're never going to get the right answers. And so if you don't have somebody who's working with you on that mentor coaching aspect of it so that they can draw that more of that out of you and that you feel more comfortable as time goes on, there's a lot of times people have things that have them stuck that happened a long time ago and they don't realize that they've taken that on. That thought process which ends up someplace deep in their body. I think so, you, touched on, you, you touched on a really big thing there about um, you know doctors only having 15 minutes. In Australia, we have a Medicare system. So the government pays the doctors a subsidy mm -hmm. on every appointment they see. So. Right. We don't actually have 15 minutes. We have like three because the doctor <laughs> wants you in and out in five minutes to click right. the government's ticket. Um, and, you know, the, they need to turn over as many patients as they can. And you're right. I've, I've been to my doctor and my doctor says to me, you know, Rodney, you're, a, you're overweight. Yeah, I know I'm overweight. You know, I, I've got diverticulitis. Like, you know, <laughs> did, did you go to school? Did you, did you get a doctorship to tell me I'm overweight? Like, I can look in the mirror and know I'm overweight. Uh. Tell me what I got to do to fix it. And mm -hmm. he can't because in three minutes time, Bing, he's got to go see someone else. Um, right. So, you know, I think having someone like yourself that, you know, can, and then, you know, you might go to a personal trainer and a personal trainer and, you know, first thing anyone does, all right, I'm unfit. I'm going to go to a personal trainer. And a personal trainer is some former sports star that's going to try and get you to run 10 kilometers to lose weight every day. You know, I can't run 10 kilometers, I'm 110 kilograms for God's sake. You know, <laughs> so he's, uh, he's not trying yeah. to understand the problems I've got. He's just trying to pitch his beliefs down well, you into don't me have, where you don't you're always in reverse, have to go you're understanding what the problem is first. Well, you don't always have to go lift weights or run miles in order to lose weight. Hmm. So, you know, and, and also the, to regain your health. You know, and because with in regaining your health or regaining where the glitches are, or even knowing where they are, with knowing where they are is like the first part of the it's the first piece of the puzzle. Because then you can go like, okay, so you have to decide what's the next best thing to do right now. You know, it's not like, oh, go do this, 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 and this, and then then you set yourself up for failure. It's like people who go out and do detoxification. You know, they go out and buy a detox kit and they're going, I'm healthy now. Well, they purge the liver. You never purge the liver, ever, ever, ever. Mm. You know, and you want to tonify the gut so it can handle those toxins or it keeps on recycling them and it keeps on putting them back into your body. So you have to consider if you think about yourself and it's like every fat cell in your body is toxic. It's where toxins hide out. You thinking, I, do you want to like get rid of all those toxins all at once? 
Mm -mm. You want to do it in a very, very logical way. And you want to do it so that it's like, you know, it's an, like maybe I wouldn't say a non-event, but it's something that you need to pay attention to. And that, you know, so that you can, you know, get can start moving around and start being better and, and being healthier. You know, because if you don't, my second patient ever in my life, her, we, I couldn't tell you what her name is because we never called her her name. And we called her grandma because she was 92 years old. And her goal in coming to a chiropractor, because I treated her um, her granddaughter, was that she wanted to finish crocheting this little afghan because they had a new one coming. And so I asked her, what do you do for exercise? And she said, because she was in pretty good shape. So like, what, I go, what do you do for exercise? And she goes, I take my, this really southern Georgia yeah. accent. I take my Dixie cup out, Dr. Pat, and I go out and I water my garden. And I said, and I'm thinking, she's gonna tell me she has 20 plants. So I asked her, how many plants do you have? She goes, 150. <laughs> you know? And so and so she would take, because she didn't wanna walk around in the neighborhood because she said it was turning iffy at that time. So she took her Dixie cup out and walked in the backyard, came in and out and did, because that's how she decided that she was gonna get her exercise. And get active, you know? yeah. And, and so, you know, and so, and she like, you know, and she was still pretty mobile, but her neck was bugging her. So all those nerves from the neck come down to your shoulders and a lot of people sit hunchback like this so immediately when that happens your head goes forward yeah. take a picture from the side show me your posture <laughs> you know and so and see you're fixing yours right now i am you've got me you've but, got me paranoid now to, to you know yeah. sit up because i've but been you know, leaning i've been leaning on my desk throughout this whole chat and now i can actually start to feel the bottom of my back from leaning so i'm like oh so dr pat's got me paranoid like <laughs> So, but what she used to say, you know, I said, so what do you owe me, 92 years old? And she goes, well, she goes, Dr. Pat, if you don't move, you're going to die. So as soon as we become stationary and more immobilized, you know, we start losing flexibility. When you start losing flexibility, you start losing strength and things become harder going up steps, your knees hurt. Your knees are not a primary support in your body, but your hips are and your ankles are. The energy translates that motion translates through the knees and those muscles that support around that area are supposed to do very specific things at a specific times. When you have good posture, that happens. But how do you get good posture back? You gotta start like, okay, so where's the best place to start to do that? You know, it might be just simple, like, you know, like when you're like, like working, you know, like when you have your lunch, go take a 20 minute walk, 10 minutes one way, 10 minutes back, get on the, you know, the tractor again, you know, and move around, bring ice packs with you, you know, things like that. There's like tons of things that, you know, you can use as examples to how to get past that barrier. So like, instead of saying problems, give me your barrier and I'll tell you how to get around it. And and so you can make it work for you. And you might have to chunk it down. If you only have a barrier that might have five components to it or three or two components that you have to do, but what's the best one to do first? Because if you don't feel like you're succeeding, you're gonna quit. You know, and quitting's not an option when you're taking over and all the reasons why and all your excuses. You have to be bigger than your excuses and you have to have be willing to do like whatever it takes to get there. I think you know, um, one of the great things with coaching and I um, I used to be in real estate um, 10 years ago before I um, before I went into this line of work and there was a great real estate coach in America by the name of Mike Ferry and um, I used to get one-on-one -on -one coaching with Mike Ferry Institute and one of the things I and that was when no one really knew knew about coaching and mentorship and what have you but one of the good things about the coaching I found with him was it kept me accountable because every Tuesday I'd have my coaching session with him and I knew that if I hadn't put into practice what we discussed the week before, um, you know, it was going to be an awkward conversation and um, I called him my accountability coach. I think in, in health, what we do need is someone to help us stay on track and be accountable because what worries me a lot about the farmers is they'll make the lifestyle choice or the lifestyle change after they have that heart attack or after they have that stroke or, you know, um, after they have a, a health scare. Um, don't wait until you have that health scare um, before you make that lifestyle change. Identify you've got a problem now and look at ways you want to change it. Like for me personally, um, I, I want to make 
a lifestyle change because I've had a life bulb, bulb moment and mm -hmm. everyone must have that life bulb moment that wants to to make the changes. You know, for me, it, it hasn't been that I've had a health scare. It's that I've got a brand new daughter. I've got my first mm -hmm. child. She's yeah. five months old. I absolutely live for her. And you know what? I know in, two, in 18 months time, she's going to be running around this house like crazy. And I don't want to be, shape. <laughs> I, I want to be running around with her. I don't want to be out of breath. So that's my, that's my um, light bulb moment. I think people have got to realize, hey, you're, everyone knows they've got, you've got an issue. Don't wait till you have that stroke. Don't wait till you have that heart attack before you make that lifestyle change. Cause that heart attack could, could be, you know, it could so be, you mightn't bounce back from it. So is it fair to say that most of the farmers in Australia are probably men? Very, very much so. Okay. So most men don't know that they have a heart condition until they have a heart attack. Mm. You know, that's a statistic by the American Heart Association, you know, and so it is the biggest, it, it's a big thing because, you know, a lot of times by the time they find out they're not, they, they don't ever go back to work and sometimes they don't even come home from the hospital. Mm. So. The, um, you know, so it's, it's important to like pay attention now to your health, you know, and not later, you know, especially if you have a kid, you know, and, and you have to like, you know, your five month old daughter, by the time you have to beat off all her boyfriends when she's 10 years old. Correct. Because, you know, when she's it's like, you better be in good shape for that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you have, you know, you have to have, you know, um, like a wherewithal, like, you know, why, like, you know, why am I doing this? Like, why, why do I spend my time doing this? I should be, I'm, I'm over the age of retirement in the United States. Why do I do this? You know, and it's just like, I'm so tired of seeing people be sick and tired of being sick and tired and they don't have a venue to go to. And they don't have somebody who's like, has any common sense to say like, well, you know, let's put two and two together because in some places that adds up to five. In my house, it adds up to four. And it's never always has been for and will always be for. So, you know, in putting the, those pieces of the puzzle together, you gotta have like, well, why is it like, you know, what's important to you? Because what happens is, is that in the really poor statistic, this is a statistic for the United States. I don't know what it is for Australia, but in the statistic in the United States, and by 2030, 50% of the population here is gonna have a chronic illness or disease. So if you take a room of, you can imagine, close your eyes and see a room of a hundred people, you know, and 50% of those people sit down. Those people who are left standing represent your mother, your father, your family, your kids, your best friends, you know, your neighbor down the street, your colleagues, they represent all those people. And those people, when they get that kind of sick, like you were just talking about, you know, having a stroke and having a heart attack and having hypertension, you know, which leads to a stroke, you know, then you have, you're like, you've got to pay attention to that statistic because nobody wants to be a burden to anybody, themselves or their family, you know, and also in that statistic that they don't really talk about is they don't talk about like what happens after. Correct. How much, what's the financial cost of that? The average cardiovascular disease person in the United States spends $19,000 extra out of pocket. Um, and so that's not like, I'd rather use that money to go hang out in Australia for like, you know, six months or whatever that would like transpire to, you know? And it's just like, to me, it's like, I want to be able to dictate where my life goes. I want to be in the driver's seat. I always say, you got to go back to basics. You got to find out what is my foundational line, you know? And where is that glitch? Go back to basics and then put the cart, not in front of the horse anymore, put the horse in front of the cart and attach it and when you get in the driver's seat, know what to do in the reins when they get in your hand. And that's what I teach people how to do. That way you can keep moving forward, you can be happier and you can be healthier. And I know I said again, and you can be a lot healthier. Who doesn't want that? Mm, I mean, correct. it doesn't, you know, it's just like, I, and it's, a, and it's just really simplistic. It's very simple. It's actually, you know, in my head I say, it's simple, but it's, and I'm sure some people right now are saying, easy for you to say, Dr. Pat. And I said, I used to be overweight. And I decided when I, I, I think if I ever want to date, I've got to lose weight, mm. you know? And I, so I made sure that I ate really well, you know, and I looked at what my possibilities were then, cause this is way back when, you know, but I was eating how I basically eat right now. 
I stopped eating sugar, I stopped going to McDonald's, I stopped doing any of those things like that to my friends. I stopped drinking any type of soda pop, no Coca-Cola, no, and no, none of that stuff because it has artificial sweeteners in it. If you ever want to lose weight, never use an artificial sweetener. It interferes with the uptake of how your food's being handled. Mm -hmm. It's like bad news, you know? And so there's things to put together and the reason why I've got, you know, you know, ask me a question, you know, um, when we came on today, so it's like I've been doing this for over 38 years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I think I've learned something. Dr. Pat, you know? how do, how I love do help I people? So our clients, let's let's talk a process about how to get you engaged. So first thing the client does is get on Amazon, buy the book. Okay, so and make uh, a time with me. That's that's easy. We can do that. Okay. Okay. Um, and make a time with me. Number two, uh, say one A. One, one A is buy the book. One B is make a time with me. Make to get a so how do we how do we organize your your websites under construction? Can we get hold of you through Facebook, LinkedIn? Well, um, you can go through my website. My website's still up, but the new one's not updated to be published. Okay, and that's um, healthteamnetwork.com? Yep, healthteamnetwork.com. And my email is askdrpat at that same healthteamnetwork.com. Yeah, so Dr. Pat at healthteamnetwork.com. So that we can get in touch with you. Um, then we have one of these one-on-ones. How does it work? So what you do is while you're waiting for the book to come to you, you can book a time with me. And my um, my calendar is uh, meet Dr. Pat point A S point M E forward slash S T M, which means stronger than medicine. Uh, okay, yep. So you have that link that you know when we scheduled this point, so we point we did it from my side. Mm -hmm. um, and so and look it was very time. easy like when i wanted to schedule this yeah. this chat i got an email link from you which we just clicked on and it had all the available times for me to chat with you so it was it was easy it's easy to do and yeah. uh you know obviously with the time changes there's no excuse for farmers because all the times that you'd have available are um times which are yeah. like i said five o'clock in the morning um or you know eight o'clock at night yeah. which is uh when farmers are available. So find solutions, not excuses, well, guys. Get on and have a chat to Dr. Pat. Yeah, you know, and also, you know, that first get acquainted call is only approximately 35 minutes in length. It's just to get to know each other. It's just so that you kind of, you get to know me, you know, you get to like, you know, I get to know you and, you know, we ask okay. some really specific questions and then I can go, then we can go forward at, or not go forward. You know, it's just like, but it costs you nothing to have that conversation because that's my gift back for, I do that all the time. I give that gift back because, you know, you need to know what your next best step is. And if you don't know, if you don't ask, you're not going to know. So don't forget your health. So you get, you get a chat with Dr. Pat gratis for free where you have a chat and you see if you like, if, you know, it, having a coach mentor, you've got to make sure you've got that. Um, like I feel, I didn't know you, I'd never met you before we've had this chat. We've been chatting for an hour and I feel like we're mates now. Um, you know, <laughs> I think that um, having that relationship with with your coach is so important. It's like, it's like a sportsman, if he doesn't get on with his coach, he's not gonna go out there and perform for him. So that first introduction, you know, I get I guess it's like a first date you're gonna see if you have that uh, that synergy together. Well, it's true, you know, it's just like, you know, I don't wanna go out with a guy who's not gonna water walk and feed me and who's not who doesn't have my best interests at heart. You know, and you know, it's just like I rather go out like I wanna go with the guy that like gets nutrition, you know, and, and, and puts those pieces of the puzzle together and is open you know, you just have to be a little, little bit open, you know, to look inside Pandora's box, you know, and then take it apart a little bit at a time, you know. So, you like, it took years to get into a certain situation. It's not going to be like, you know, you can't put all my knowledge in one month of treatment, right? In one month of having a conversation, you know, and you don't want to set yourself up for failure anyway. So, you want to put it, you want to chunk it out so that it's very, very workable. And, you know, so it's, it's that... You know, it's, it's very workable, it's very doable, and you know, you can get, make a lot of strides. If you get, if you give me something to work with, you know, I can help you make changes in your life that are gonna be long lasting. And that's where it's really counts, especially if you have loved ones that are dependent upon you. Guys, I think one of the biggest issues on a farm, and when we talk about farmers and health, you know, the farmers do wait until 
you know, they have that heart attack or they have that health scare before they say, well, I've got a problem. Um, one of the biggest excuses they make is, well, I don't have time to, to look after myself. I don't have time to, to talk to Dr. Pat. I don't have time to go see a dietitian. Well, when you have that heart attack or you have that health scare, you're going to have a lot of time off. And the show goes on. The farm works. Don't wait for that to happen because when you have that time off, okay, that can potentially jeopardize your business. Could be in the middle of harvest. It could be in the middle of a very big time. Um, at the start of this podcast, we chatted about how farmers look after their tractor. Start looking after your body the same. Guys, get in, get in touch with Dr. Pat. She's fantastic. Um, you get that no obligation first chat to see if uh, if there's any synergies there. And if there's not, there's no problem. But, um, you know, at least, I'll I've, at least I've be seen, able to them. I've seen a lot of people that, you know, they want money up front, they want to charge up front, and those people want that money up front because they don't back their own ability. Dr. Pat's backing her own ability in having that first chat with you um, by, by not charging anything, so take advantage of it. Um, Dr. Pat, I want to thank you for having a yarn with us today. Now, um, I guess if you didn't learn, if you learned something about Australian farmers, you learned what having a yarn means. I have. I can't wait to have another one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I am from the Midwest, you know, and Midwesters, it's, it's like, with, this is a difference. I lived in Boston and uh, in the East Coast for a while. You know, it, out in Boston, people will actually say to you, like, um, so in your points, what? And I'm thinking, where did you learn your manners at? In the Midwest, you can have a conversation to have a conversation. It doesn't always have to go someplace. You can just like talk about the weather or talk about the rain, or you can talk about, you know, it's just like, you know, how's, like, how's the cows down the street? I always just see the, the guy who managed the cow farm across the street. And I, I always just, you know, say like, hey, well, I'll see you later. And he goes, well, do you want some eggs or something? And I said, no, I'll, I'll get them later on. You know, put them out, I'll get them on my way back from where I'm going, like if I was out for a walk or something like that. And um, he just said, well, he goes, you're an odd one. <laughs> and it's just that, you know, because I, just, I, from the mid, this is because that's when I was in the East Coast. So, you know, I'm from the Midwest and it's, so it's like I engage and I embrace people. I want people to be the best person they possibly can be physically, mentally, emotionally, socially, and spiritually. And it's like if you can have that and you can regain that, you start putting the glue together for that, then you've got your foundation, right? And then you can put the horse in front of the car. Then you can sit in the seat and then you know where in the heck you're going so you don't get lost again. No, very, very good advice. And uh, Dr. Pat, I want to thank you for having a chat with us today. Um, I'm going to have that, I'm going to take you up on that offer and have that uh, free first initial consultation and uh, I'm going to get, as soon as we finish this chat, I'm going to get on uh, your website and book that and uh, hopefully uh, people might start seeing me over the next six months on the podcast getting thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. That might be the goal. Uh, Dr. Pat, thanks for having a yarn with us and... Uh, Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. Guys, first thing you need to do, go out and grab the book, Why Are You Sick, Fat and Tired? I think that uh, that's your first step in ensuring, you know, New Year's resolution, new you, new me. Well, you need coaching, you need accountability in order to achieve that. You're not alone. There's great people out there that can help you, people like Dr. Pat. My name's Rodney. I'm from I Comply. And if you like what I have to say, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks for listening. Thank you.